Hey y'all, I wanted to make this video because I've been doing some research on remote ID and with the effective date quickly approaching, I just want to make sure I understand what it all means. So I thought I'd share some of that with you, but definitely do your own research, right? I'm just a guy off of YouTube, uh, but I will be leaving links to the sources of what I'm sharing down in the description box. The effective date is September 16th of 2023. That is the effective date for remote ID. That's when it's supposed to kick in. So in understanding what will be required of us drone enthusiasts, I also looked into what remote ID module options are currently available. And unfortunately, there ain't many at this point, and many of them are out of stock or back order. Now, I still own the Parrot Anafi and I have other budget GPS drones that they just don't have remote ID built in. So I need to know what options are out there. Before I show you what remote ID module options currently exist as of August of 2023, let's do a quick overview of what you need to do to be remote ID compliant. Now, what I'm giving you right now is directly from the FAA website. So I'm not inserting any interpretation or anything like that. This is straight from the FAA's mouth. We're gonna stay pretty high level, but I think this will give you a good understanding if you don't have one already. Now, what is it? Remote ID is the ability of a drone in flight to provide identification and location information that can be received by other parties through a broadcast signal. There's two types of signals. There's broadcast slash direct, and then there's network. The requirement for remote ID will be broadcast or direct, not network. I'm gonna repeat that. It's gonna be broadcast direct, not network. And I won't go into all the details about the difference, but I mentioned it because you're gonna to wanna to select a module that broadcasts remote ID using the broadcast slash direct method. Now, the FAA indicates three ways to comply with the remote ID rule. Number one, operate a standard remote ID drone. All right, so this means the drone has remote ID broadcast capabilities built into the drone. Number two, operate a drone with remote ID broadcast modules. So these are drones that don't have broadcast capabilities built in, but they have to be retrofitted with a module that broadcasts identification and location information. And then number three, operate at FAA recognized identification areas. The acronym there is FRIAS. Uh, and these are locations where you can operate a drone without remote ID. They're sponsored by community-based organizations or educational institutions. Okay, let's go back to option number two because that's really why I'm doing this video. So drones that don't have broadcast capabilities built in, those are the drones that will have to have a broadcast uh, module attached. I'm gonna show you what's available in just a second, but let's just park here for a second. I'm going to read you something verbatim from the FAA website. Quote, beginning September 16, 2023, all drone pilots required to register, including those who fly for recreation, business or public safety, must operate their drone in accordance with the rule on remote ID. Unquote. OK, the operative word I want to key in on is register. So it says all drone pilots required to register. Okay, so what are the drone registration requirements? Quote, all drones must be registered except those that weigh 0.55 pounds or less than 250 grams and are flown under the exception for limited recreational operations. Basically, this applies to sub 250 gram drones flown for recreational purposes, not part 107 or commercial purposes. Now, if the requirement is for registered drones, then that implies that drones that are not required to be registered, again, sub 250 flown for recreational purposes, these drones are exempt from remote ID. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I haven't been able to find what I just stated, stated explicitly by the FAA anywhere on their website but 
it is a logical contextual deduction based on what the FAA has asserted as the requirements for both remote ID and drone registration. OK, let's check out which modules are currently available and let's start with the one that you've probably already heard of the drone tag beacon $219 for this one. And by the time we've gone through all the options, that price won't seem as bad. It is a direct broadcast module. So that meets the remote ID requirements. And this is probably at the top of the list in terms of options. However, they don't begin shipping until mid October, at least when I last checked. Next, we have the drone tag mini, and this one goes for $329. And I think they just bumped up the price from $299 because I swear I saw it for $299. So $300 range to get remote ID on your drone. It actually broadcasts direct and network. So you're covered for the US, which requires direct, as I mentioned earlier. And the last time I checked, it was out of stock. But check below for a link if you want to check this one out. They're saying to expect four to eight weeks after purchase for delivery. So it sounds like they are quite backed up, backlogged. All right, next we have the UAvionics Ping RID, $299 for this one. And it was showing back ordered as well with a link to pre-order. So 300 bones again, y'all. Nothing on their site states whether it's direct or network, but it explicitly states that this will meet the FAA remote ID mandate. Next is the Zephyr, $305 for the Zephyr. So you can see at this point, you're likely gonna be out of pocket at least a couple hundred dollars for one of these modules. And it looks like this one does broadcast both direct and network and it's only available on back order. Now I did find one more that's actually under $150. It's a UK based website, but it looks like they do ship to the US. This one's called the Drone Beacon. 129 euros that converts to $141 US and it does broadcast direct and it is also out of stock as of the last time I checked. All right, so here's where I ask you guys to share any remote ID modules you've come across just to help the rest of us out. YouTube doesn't like when folks drop links, so leave the name of the module and the name of the website in the comments, if you wouldn't mind. Personally, I plan to keep on flying after remote ID becomes effective, so really this shouldn't really change much for me. Most of the drones that I do have have remote ID built in. My DJI drones have it, so it's not like I won't be able to fly at all. But again, I am concerned about the drones I do have that don't have remote ID. After the effective date, the only thing we should see being released are drones, GPS drones that have remote ID built in. At least that would be my presumption and expectation. All right, see y'all in the next one. And until then, be good to somebody, be good to yourself. Later, y'all.